is the Whitley Finance Committee meeting. Um, we have on our agenda today, we will be discussing the budgets of the assessors, the South County Senior Center, Tritown Beach, the Police Department, South County EMS, and town buildings. Um, right now, um, we have a motion to accept the minutes of the last meeting. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We don't have to do a roll call, right? Because we're all here. Is there anybody on the line from Jim? Jim. Oh, Jim. So, so we do. Yeah. Okay, Jim. Aye. Aye. Okay. Donna. And Brenda. Aye. Brenda's on the line too. Where is Where is Brenda? Oh, I see her. I'm looking okay. at her. Wonderful. Okay, Brenda. Terrific. Uh, is that uh, what's your vote on that, Brenda? Aye. Terrific. Okay. Um, Dan. Aye. I for myself. Um, okay. Very good. Okay, so we're going to start uh, this meeting off with the assessor's office, and um, understand that this is live, and uh, in essence, <coughs> you're telling us about your budget, but you're telling the people of Waitley of um, how you want to spend their money um, to help them. So. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the assessor's budget? We see that it's down 12.57. Uh, well, I I did the best I could to, to keep it down as low as possible. Mm -hmm. And we do have, uh, so I have, have removed things that we have traditionally carried across as line items. Um, such as uh, oh, professional development because in this coming year I believe we're going to have all the same assessors so there won't be any school necessary okay. um, postage is covered um, by the general office uh, I don't go to any far away meetings if I go to any meetings I just I, I don't submit my uh, any mileage. And uh, I decided that our, our computer was probably new enough, we would chance it for a year and not fund any hardware maintenance. Okay. But uh, what has gone up, there are two main things that have gone up. Um, well, actually, the software fee has not gone up for Patriot Properties, which is our, our software. The mapping charge has gone up a little bit, not much. The big change, and it happened last year, but it's going to just continue to be part of the budget, I fear, is that the Department of Revenue is insisting on a very elaborate means of, uh, of calculating the value of certain utilities. And the ones in particular are the ones which are the code 504, which are the generation uh, utilities. It's Berkshire Gas and it's Eversource. And that's a fixed expense. Uh, it's not something I can do <clears throat> or any of the assessors. We have always uh, put aside about $3,000 to work with Dwayne Adams at Mayflower Valuation. And this is really valuable uh, because he has worked with all the people in the Department of Revenue and it just smooths the path to getting our, our values certified each year. Uh, it used to be on a per diem basis. His per diem rate Double almost, not quite, but went from I think 1,900 to 13 or 1,400 a day. And when we went out to bid, because I did want, I did want to look at what other people could offer, other companies. Um, I felt that his was the most reasonable. I think we could work within it. It could, it could perhaps even be somewhat lower than the 3,800. 
and that line where it says main flower evaluation. Um, I have not budgeted for any extra time over what that is, but I believe that that will cover all the time we need. So I'm pretty confident this is pretty uh, accurate. Everything else is just pretty much level funded. Questions on your your uh, hardware, your maintenance fee? You you dropped because you say it's running good. But oh, I understand. What it's, about next year? Well, we don't know. I mean, you know, I mean, computers have to be replaced on a fairly regular right. basis. Right. I know. That's why I'm wondering whether you know, drop it completely or leave it there. If it's how old is it? It's within two years. I was going to say it's fairly new. Yeah. Yeah. And we, we do have a general sort of computer replacement uh, line item in the budget. It's fairly new then, yeah. If something catastrophic were to happen, I think we'd be able to. Okay, good. Those building coffee on it will be all Oh, I'm very careful. <laughs> and then the reason, so the 10000 from last year was for the five year rebound, right? That added even more, yeah, for and the five year rebound. So that's so. So, so that, five years. So I five sort years of split. I split that ninety nine hundred into two lines. One, both things will be done by Mayflower, but sure. um, the utilities is a separate line in their proposal. It was in all all three proposals I got. It was a separate line, and that is right in line with the others. That thirty nine fifty. To do those two utilities. Will the utilities assessment be a yearly thing or every Apparently couple of years? It is. I didn't think it was going to be, but Dwayne said it. it well, yeah. No, that's for like the solar stuff. No, that is, no, that would all come under that 3,800. Um, okay. The assessment that 3,950 is for just the two utilities, Eversource. And Berkshire Gas. So, like the power lines, the Berkshire Gas station over right. here. Right. We can't do that on our own. Well, it's a it's a very. I have seen Dwayne's depreciation schedule. I mean, this thing goes on for pages. And I guess we we can't just assume that it could be carried across from one year to the next. Mm -hmm. Every year has to be looked at. That's something I can talk with Dwayne and James uh, Quackenbush, who is also part of the company, about with the idea that maybe I could do more of it. But well, I think very I don't know the figures, but I would imagine the return to the town that's why the taxation of those that particular is, properties yes. is significant enough where it might warrant having the IE, the professional, coming in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm sorry to say I did not look to see what those figures meant, you know, the difference. Yeah. yeah. I know that's that's been a big argument for doing these things is to uh, generate more income from these from these utilities that were using very rapid depreciations yeah. so that they had very low values. Sure. Yeah. And I think this requirement was a result of years of litigation, right? Oh yeah, well, I know that they yes. So that's, that's part of where it's coming from. Is that there's been years of litigation between municipalities and utilities and yeah. Yeah. NDLS, and sure. it's kind of how it's all shaken out. Um, I have one question, and that's on the salaries. And why did the assistant assessor salary drop by $4,000? That's a very interesting question. Um, I don't know whether that was that that higher. I mean that that number came to me. I don't think I filled that in, and I think it's possible that it was based on my new higher hourly rate. But as as if I had not dropped from from eighteen and a half to sixteen hours. So there's a reduction in hours. Yeah, because that was my whole intention was that I 
when I asked to get a raise was that I would not you know, boost that line. So you're saying your your hourly your hours put in has dropped. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Are there I'd like to say that yeah, Cynthia, you know, spent quite a bit of time looking at the budget and and getting these these two uh, company well Mayflower to uh, do these uh, two separate uh, activities for us. Uh, she did look at other other companies and uh, two or three other companies. We talked to other towns. Uh, the Board of Assessors was involved in looking at these other companies uh, that we could have went with. They weren't any any cheaper than this. Some were even considerably higher than this uh, price. And uh, based on on what we've received, Cynthia received stuff uh, by email, written proposals from these companies, and this was the the best that we thought would would suit our needs and it would help the town get updated and proper assessments for utilities. And I guess we're looking at personal property for the other the other item. And, and I, I guess it's one of my concerns was if we do the hire these companies, is Cynthia going to be able to, how many hours is Cynthia going to be able to work extra to, to deal with these two companies? And, and she's graciously said she, she will do that within her schedule and even less hours than she has last year. So uh, I, I guess I feel as chairman of the board that, that this is reasonable and we, we think we, we have a good program here to uh, help assess values, maintain assess values in the town. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Uh, it's a strong argument um, in your favor. Um, so with a budget of uh, $44,130, you feel strongly that uh, the town will be served and uh, things will be assessed correctly, right? Yep. Great. Any other questions before we wrap this up? From House Jim, anything, Jonathan, Brenda? No, thank you for asking. Okay. Um, no, nope. thanks. All righty. Thank you very much okay. for coming in. All right. And the people in Whitley, thank you. Um, okay, next on the agenda, South County? Yes, I am. Okay, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I'm Paul Antea. Hi, I'm uh, Jennifer Remillard. Donna, and you're new to the position? Yes, I started 30th of January. Okay, congratulations on Thank the position. You. Why don't we introduce ourselves to her and uh, just uh, Tommy, Tom Maher, Paul Antea, as I said. Dan Kennedy. I'm sorry. Dan Kennedy. Hey. Fred Barron. Thanks again. Um, and on, um, and you can see on the screen we have a couple of finance committee mem members at home: Jim Kirkendall and Bre Brenda uh, Darty. And uh, oh, I think I know Brenda. Darty Wallace, Pillsbury Murphy. Yes. And Jen, I'm here as well. Hi, Jonathan. Right, and John, I, I'm sure you know Jonathan. Um, okay, so let me uh, let us find the budget. Um, we have the budget. On CRS the, five. CRS five. There it Tab is. two. Right. Um, okay, South County Senior Center. Um, with a, um, a budget to Waitley of $32,497. Um, and that is um, essentially an increase of $8,268. So as we've done in the past, can we ask everybody, tell us a little bit about the program and uh, why the increases are the way they are and what you hope to accomplish for um, citizens of Waitley who utilize solar. Okay. Great. 
Um, as I said, my name is Jennifer Remillard. I started in the position 31 January of this year. Um, just to give you some statistical data, because I um, heard that is something that is important to share. Um, so the increase in the budget is due to mostly the lease expenditure, which has previously been um, not something that we have had to look at in the past. We're currently leasing the Holy Family Parish Hall for $1,000 a month. And we have an extension through December 31st of this year to stay. Um, so we estimated uh, budgeting for up to a year, uh, starting with obviously the beginning of the fiscal year for 12 months, just to um, prevent any need to come back in front of the finance committees later on for, for additional funding. Um, so that is not something that was previously budgeted for in the past. Um, so with that amount, <coughs> Our budget increase is actually only at five thousand four hundred thirty-five dollars from um, from the previous year's data, from what I have in front of me. Um, so we could be off by a, a little bit there, but um, what we chose to do as well um, was we moved some expenditures that are typically under the operations budget onto our fund two ninety-one, which is the formula grant. The state of Massachusetts, as you know, provides $12 per senior or a minimum of $6,000 per community um, towards that grant. Um, so that funding um, typically would house some of the operations budget expenditures that I moved them over to the grant section in order to facilitate the payment um, for an outreach coordinator position. During COVID-19, we all saw the statistics with isolation among seniors increasing. Um, and one of the key pieces, you know, looking at the new COVID variants that are continuing to pop up um, and to prepare for any additional, you know, disasters that could occur, um, it's essential to move that operations or that outreach position under the operations budget. With that being said, um, it's a $15,449 expenditure. Um, which would normally be spent on other items such as um, Comcast um, and some other pieces which are on the other uh, budget that I have. It's not something that you typically vote on, but it's a grant, so I moved things around um, that way. Um, to move into the expenses for the particular operations budget this year, um, so those two expenses, the $15,000 coordinator position and the $12,000 lease agreement um, were the biggest markers. I've tried to cut expenses as much as possible under the operations budget, hoping to move it to the grant um, side of the house. And I did so because it's um, unsure whether or not the um, Massachusetts Council on Aging um, and the Elder Affairs, Office of Elder Affairs for the Commonwealth will provide the state grant, which is typically been provided um, annually, which normally would cover that outreach position. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those are some changes that I made there. Um, but I wanted to share some details. Since we've moved into this new location at the Holy Family Parish, we've seen an increase in membership of about um, 3.6% overall. Um, we have approximately 505 members on our roster, and we have an active amount uh, where we su provide support for approximately 72 to 75 people, um, you know, for the highest day of the, of the month. So that's usually our food distribution that comes out to address food insecurity um, that we have a partnership with the Franklin um, Area Survival Center. 9.5% uh, uh, of our membership are Waitley residents. 9%? 9.51%. 9 so, um, 48 people is what we have. We've increased um, for our, we've increased 18, we've received 18 new members since January 1 of this year, and 45% of those new members, so half is, uh, or a little under half, is our Waitley residents. So um, the biggest issue that we've heard based on the UMass uh, survey that was conducted with all three communities is the majority of people are unaware of the services that we provide. 
um, what are the expenditures that I'm looking forward to, um, or I'm looking to create in the beginning of the fiscal year is to do a postcard, you know, mailing, because a lot of our um, community is unaware um, and they don't all have email or, you know, access to the internet and, and other things along those lines. We've seen technology uh, be a key issue that we've tried to provide some resources for. We recently held an information or information um, day for technology questions. So we had Wellesley College volunteers come out and provide services to about 17 uh, total members for that one day. Um, so at this point, we're looking to increase our visibility. Um, we're looking to have activities, host activities in all three towns, not just Deerfield, which I know has been a primary concern of the other two communities. Um, we are, uh, we received a grant for up to $500 to have a kickoff event for the Walk Massachusetts Challenge sponsored by the MCOA, which gives our Council on Aging, which is you know, in actuality, all three of us combined for the South County Senior Center for up to $1,000 for programming. Um, we were only the only location in Western Mass chosen out of four locations in the entire state. Um, I also have applied for two grant opportunities through the AARP Community Challenge. <laughs> One is to ascertain um, iPads and cases uh, to be distributed by a lottery system <laughs> um, for residents who don't have the means to purchase or just don't have access to having um, iPad technology. So that way it would hopefully decrease isolation, increase participation amongst you know, municipal meetings um, and other things along those lines. Hopefully we'll find out mid-May if we received those. Um, but in total, it's uh, just under $30,000 that I asked for between the two grants. So while those expenses I do not see coming from you know, any municipal budget, it's just something <coughs> that we can take advantage of. So I'm also looking for additional grants um, to provide services and supports for um, our programming. Um, one thing that you will notice that the other two towns uh, were curious about was our miscellaneous budget for approximately, I think, $3,000. <laughs> um, I put that in there because there's been unanticipated expenditures. And at this point, I've actually uh, found $1,200 worth that have come in that were not previously listed on other budgets specifically. So for example, $490 for our security um, system monitoring that we paid to Northeast IT. Um, that was not incorporated in any of the previous year budgets. So that's a just $490 expense. So I have that in there to you know, have some leeway just in case we have additional unanticipated monies um, that's requested. Also, um, you know, we're looking at, uh, we already ordered our tent for this coming year. Um, and while uh, we do have some leeway with possibly a donation account that we've received money for for program expenses, um, I just wanna leave that Three thousand dollars in there to make sure that we're we're sustained, uh, because unfortunately, you know, I think the lack of membership has been two two reasons. The primary has been a uh, COVID, obviously, and the second has been the lack of a viable location. Now that we're in a good space, we're seeing an increase in membership, as I mentioned previously, but also some of our you know our our, our your constituents within the community have raised concern about feeling comfortable being in a religious location. So for those who um, are comfortable going there, we felt that the tent would also be a really a viable location for, for those folks to feel welcome because we want to be welcoming to everyone um, who seeks to use our services. So. Um, just a quick question. Sure. Now that you're at the, the Holy Family site, are you responsible for the utilities there? No, we are not. The utilities listed in the budget are for the existing structure where we have been at 67 North Main. All of our items are currently being stored there. Um, and we do, uh, Sue Corey, who is our program um, coordinator, she is currently out of uh, that location, as well as our life path representative, Kathy Bednarski. 
So they are still in that space. Yeah. Um, I will actually be moving over there. We were able to address some concerns regarding mold and a few other things on the first floor. And yeah. uh, found some resolution. So our offices will be there. It's just the programming space is not there. So um, I'm unsure as to how much you may or may not know. Uh, Deerfield is looking to go forward with an MOU um, memorandum of understanding with Deerfield Academy to get renovations completed on the congregational church, which is located next door to the existing facility at 67 North Main. Um, the delay occurred with that as to getting it completed prior to Deerfield Academies undergoing their own summer construction timeline. So originally we were looking at potentially being in the congregational church uh, by the beginning of July, but construction and renovations to the congregational church will not begin until September, October timeframe at this point for, for our understanding. Um, so at this time, we will still be in that space. There's nowhere else to house the staff on a regular you know, basis mm -hmm. um, and store all of our items. Um, that is something that we're looking at uh, trying to resolve with possibly renting a pod. I'm working with our DBW uh, Assistant Superintendent Chris Miller in Deerfield right now to try to go through combines to figure that storage piece out. With the given um, pricing of gas and oil head, heading north, um, <laughs> did you anticipate that? Because you, you must still have to heat the building and, and so all keep of those everything. Yep, all of those expenditures are listed on the existing budget there. Um, we're not in there full time all day. Recently, I've been working out of the town hall facility sharing uh, office with Casey Warren, our Deerfields town administrator. Um, so they, you know, and we don't foresee once we're moved into the congregational church, it will no longer be responsibility to heat and facilitate or keep that building um, heated electric, you know, all the utilities won't need to be paid from our budget. Mm -hmm. So once we're over to the congregational church, we won't have to do that. So I'm also looking at decreasing some of the expenditures with possibly the janitorial fees, um, you know, because if we're not having clients come, or, you know, seniors come in on a regular basis and just staff it, you know, it's not used as frequently. Plus, um, during the three days a week, for programming, I'm typically over at the Holy Family Parish most of the time. Um, there are some times I have admin work to do that I have to stay behind, but I like to be, um, you know, amongst everyone. Yeah. So. So what's that relationship going to be like once you move from the Holy Family site to the congregational site? What's um, the relationship going to be like between the congregational church and the senior center? So. Um, the goal is to fully move into the congregational church and not be in that existing 67 North Main Street building at all. So any utility expenditures would be just on the congregational church at that point in time. There would be nothing that we would have to pay for at the 67 North Main. It would then become the town of Deerfield's um, responsibility. I, I spoke um, and asked some of those questions with the town administrator, as well as um, Trevor McDaniel, who's also one of the board of oversight, uh, because that was my concern moving forward. I do not want our budget to have to endure payment for those costs or for those expenses. Um, we've also were asked by Sunderland, you know, if we were going to be paying those as well. So I know it's a concern of everyone, including myself, because I would like to have more money to be able to put towards programming. Sure. Um, than to have to pay for utilities in a building we're not using all the time. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, do we have any questions from somebody online? Jim or Brenda? Um, I'm all set. Okay. I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, hey, I just wanted to, to point out, though, that, um, you know, the budget is, is only half the story for the senior center. Um, the, the, the senior center is uh, a value add on top of the program and because of being able to step up to the plate. You have no idea how many outreach calls and other activities were, were done by the senior center during the, the, the height of, of both COVID outbreaks uh, in terms of communication with seniors, in terms of 
um, vaccination schedules, making sure that seniors are aware, especially those who don't have online access, making sure that we were scheduling vaccination uh, times for seniors and doing all the little things that that an organization that is, you know, it's, it's, it's mandated to do operations, but it's also mandated to be a, 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 a stakeholder uh, on behalf of our seniors. So um, I, I just wanted to, to give a, a, a shout out, if you will, to the actions of the Senior Center in terms of what they bring to Waitley that a lot of people don't realize on an ongoing basis. Um, I also wanted to point out that even though we will be going into the, the congregational church, that is in all likelihood a temporary measure. Um, there's going to be a space assessment uh, <clears throat> performed to know exactly what type of footprint is gonna be required to house the senior center long-term. Um, that space assessment will then an analyze where that type of space is available in all three communities, uh, Waitley, Deerfield and Sunderland to see again the geographic footprint and 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 what options we have for a for a, a permanent uh home housing uh that 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 really could um function on behalf of all seniors and not just um seniors who are who are getting on but 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 seniors who who as of yet don't consider themselves to be seniors so that we can escape the 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 the, the impression that, that senior centers are, are are just for um for, for people with fewer options, we we want to we want to do more and a a a new building um, that has that has the adequate space uh, without restrictions, obviously based upon financial constraints that may may exist uh, are in the long term plans. <clears throat> Good to know. Um, could you tell me what your overall budget is? Um, our overall budget request between the three communities. Sorry, just gotta pull that up here. Hundred and twenty. Hundred and twenty nine nine eighty six. So round up to one thirty. Okay. Okay. Um, any questions, Donna? So I'd like to ask a question. I'm representing Jonathan's group of seniors who are not interested in self-identifying as seniors. <laughs> Probably most of the people in this room, except Brian, are in the category. Brian's close. Enough. Appreciate very, that. Very, Thank you. Pretty close. I feel um, that a little though. I, I, I just I don't know very much about the senior center. Um, I had the impression when you were talking about the number of members that you were pleased that it is increasing. Is there an optimal number of members, either in terms of state guidelines or your sense of the communities? Um, I don't believe there are state guidelines. And what is a member? <laughs> that's, the, that's the other question so, I wanted to ask. Sure. Um, so just for clarification, member and, and for people watching as well, membership is free. There's no, there's no charge to become a member. It's just registering with us. We get an, a list um, from each town clerk's office based on our census data. Um, we provide services and supports to individuals who are ages 55 and up, and anyone who is disabled automatically, you know, can become a member regardless of age. Um, so there is no specific membership number. Um, I would love to see it, you know, be a certain percentage of all three towns. Um, just stepping through this role, you know, there's a lot of information that I'm receiving from the Board of Oversight, from the seniors who are active, um, and there's also seniors who are hearing word of mouth of different activities that we have going on, and they're really thrilled. Um, our, a, a great problem to have our morning Monday, Wednesday, Friday exercise program through the YMCA. They come and have an instructor, instructor on site. Um, is getting really big. We were almost over our cap of 22 people who come each particular day of the week for those. Um, and I would like to also have enough membership where we can increase programming five days a week. So we're not just limited to three days a week. Um, so right now, while you're looking for a specific number, I don't have one. Just because to, just to, my goal, just, yeah. yeah. Do we want if we have 48 waiting members, do you want 100? Do you want 300? I, I would, have no idea what you're thinking would be good. So <laughs> um, at this point, is let me just pull back. 
So right now we have around, um, we have 268 resident or members who are from Deerfield. We have 87, actually 89 now that are from Sunderland um, and the 48 from Waitley. We do have people who pop in, you know, maybe um, I have a woman comes in from East Hampton who loves to play bingo on Mondays. She loves the atmosphere. She loves the people. So she comes in. Um, so we provide, you know, we, we're welcoming to anyone who wants to come in. Um, we've also gotten feedback that they like the atmosphere compared to other, um, you know, senior centers. So they come for specific reasons. Um, one of the biggest things that we've seen a need for in our communities, all three of them, has been um, relief for food insecurity. Um, some people that had issues with re retirement pay, you know, prior to COVID happening, people were forced into retirement or lost jobs. Um, and needed food support. So we have two partnerships, the Brown Bag Program and the uh, Franklin Area Survival Center. Um, and I've seen new members come in who may have been from out of state looking for community. And that is something that we offer, um, which has been really great. Tomorrow, for example, we're celebrating Women's History Month and we're offering a tea social for people to come. There's no charge for people to come. It's, you know, if you want to make a donation, we have a box out. Um, people do, some people don't, some people can't afford to, some people, um, you know, go over above and beyond. Yeah. Um, we're also working to partner with the three Council on Aging on a monthly basis. We just had a meeting last Thursday um, and everyone is really um, intrigued and excited about how we're moving forward. So I foresee, you know, increase in activity with those um, three entities. And I was also given the information for the weekly scoop. So that's a way to get more information out to the community who doesn't participate right now. Sure. Um, and we're also looking to be very um, visible within the community. So I think by increasing the three location activities, not just focusing on Deerfield um, and making sure everyone feels included, or at least the invitation is there. Um, so I'm thinking maybe in six months, I can try to give you an accurate number or percentage That's reasonable. Um, um, for that. My other question is about the transportation line, because I was wondering whether membership is limited to those who are able to drive. We actually... What are, you, what are you planning to do with yeah. your transportation yeah. line? I appreciate that question. Um, as you may or may not know, we received the donation of the van the other year from Hatfield. Um, I've been working with our DPW to making sure it's maintained and everything's ready to go. Um, we, the three town administrators and myself had email correspondence regarding you know, logo, lettering, et cetera. So that's in process. Um, right now. So we're hoping to incorporate a program where we can pick up seniors who need the transportation, who do not live um, on a PBTA or FRTA line. And there, we're also trying to work on the nuance because there is an issue where there's the boundary line with the FRTA, PBTA. Um, I've already been in contact with Michael up at the FRTA. I'm reaching out to the rep um, for the PBTA at this, this week to see um, if we can start dialogue on that. Um, and we also have partnered with Valley Neighbors who's based in Wheatley but supports all three communities. And we're hoping that they'll also be able to help with maybe transporting seniors who want to go to different activities or events. Um, well, that's certainly important for yes. Yes, residents in Wheatley and I'm sure Sunderland as well. There, there's also a, to further go into that answer though, there's also a um, small and rural conference in Sturbridge on May 4th that I'm attending. And that is something that they're addressing is to volunteer program. Massachusetts offers different um, direction and possibly grants in order to facilitate that. Um, so we're looking as to how we can do that. Maybe myself initially driving to pick up people prior to the start of the day for programming but also to see about their volunteer program. Um, and I had done some research on that prior to um, we started the session. That would be very helpful. You said something interesting, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong. You said when, um, when people sign up to join the center, mm -hmm. 
they fill out a census card? No, they fill out a registration form. Okay. Basically, it asks for their personal information, but also an emergency contact and a family contact. And if they have a medical condition that we should be aware of or any medication should an emergency arise at while they're at the center. So obviously, you know what town they are from. Yes. And did you say you get in touch with the town to back check that or not? Did I so, misunderstand that? Nope. Um, so what, I, what I've what i recently done is I emailed um, the three town, uh, the three towns clerks mm -hmm. in order to get the data. So I made sure to have an accurate listing of people um, that are in our ages that we support. Okay. Um, so I have that information. Good. So one of the conundrums that have, has occurred with our My Senior Center in the past um, was there was no accurate way to clarify um, the Waitley dynamic because of the way that the addresses are done by the post office. So we wanted to ensure that we had accurate information. And by having that data, we can also target market, um, you know, our, our population for our postcard mailing and other things moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, by ensuring we have the most up-to-date census yeah. information on an annual basis, we'll be able to do that. But I would imagine that anyone who filled out a register Now, did you start the registration card process? So, or was that before you? So there was a registration process in place when I came on board. However, I've modified and revised and added some additional information, including email addresses, because um, unfortunately, that was not data that was captured. So we're trying to increase um, email correspondence to those that have access. So that way we can also reduce our expenses on postage by sending out the newsletter every month digitally versus paper. Completely understandable. Just yeah. to let you know, we've been asking for this number for five years. And well, no one in the South County Senior Center has ever been able to tell us how many people from Waitley attend that center? And now that you've taken over, you came over on January what? 31st. And today is March, March 29th. So in three months, you were able to get us that number. Yes. Very good. Um, I think that's two months, Paul. Yeah, I'm giving her a month, okay? That's what <laughs> I'm going to do. Joyce, you're always coming. You're going to stop that. Um, but that means I accomplished it in less time. So yeah. that's a good thing. Okay. All right. Very good. Well, any other questions? Please. Oh, that's a clapping emoji. <laughs> Joyce? Oh, oh, Joyce is clapping. Okay. All right. Well, all, all is well. Yeah. And if you have, if you want any updated information, I'm more than happy to come into your regular finance committee meetings. Just um, give me ample notice so I can make sure that I have up to date information for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful Thank evening. You. you too. These guys love visitors, so drop by anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much, and Jonathan. Thank you for popping on with me too. Okay. All right. Uh, next on our agenda, I see that we have a visitor from the other side. A man who saves lives. Oh, oh. Mm -hmm. come on down. Water. I, uh, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. That, that's a good reputation to have, right? It is. Versus, Absolutely. Know. No doubt about that. Um, okay, South County EMS. We are, so we're going to find that. Where is that? Four. Yes, two of the section four. Four. Here we go. Three have the most recent one. Please. South County EMS likes to send multiple budgets. Yeah, the yeah. They give us. They trend. usually trend in a certain direction. Ample yeah, so. They trend in a good direction. Yeah. So, like the school department, start high and work out. You scare us first, and then yeah. We... So we know that we have the right one. Are we looking at a percentage change of 28.69? No. Nope. No. I do have a wrong one. Yeah, no. You should, you'll be very pleased then. You should say submitted, FY23 submitted to. Okay. Are we, we going 11.79? That's it. Oh, oh nice revision. That's it. Yep. Okay. All right. So, again, uh, thanks for coming in. And um, 
And as always, you know, you're telling us about your services, but yeah. you're really telling people of Waitley. Yeah. Because now everybody's watching. Yes. Okay. It's for everybody at home. I'm sure this won't be new to everybody in the room, but um, uh, I work for South County EMS. We're the regional ambulance service for the towns of Waitley, Deerfield, and Sunderland. We were formed in 2014 when all three towns came together and basically confronted, uh, you know, volunteerism head on. So we, we, those three towns had volunteer ambulances at the time and just nobody's available anymore to respond during the day or at night and the responsibilities for paramedics, talking about three years in school, 100 hours a year of continuing education, yada, 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 um, was getting untenable. So the three towns came together. Uh, we created South County EMS for a municipal department uh, we technically are a department of the town of Deerfield for accounting and fiduciary duties, but we have a board of oversight that governs our kind of strategic plan uh, and our vision, and that is comprised of two representatives from each of the member towns. So those are appointed by the town. Jonathan Edwards is on the board of oversight along with Gary Stone for weekly, so the former EMS director. We are only focused on the ambulance for paramedics. So all of our budget, all of our training, all of that stuff, all of that goal is only to provide high quality emergency medical care. And we start with what it takes to do that. We have one ambulance uh, available 24 seven at the paramedic level. Um, and then we add some additional staffing during the day when we get a little bit busy and we figure out what that's going to cost. And then from that, we anticipate a certain amount of revenue from billing insurance. So we subtract that from the total. And then what the remainder, um, if there's any retained earnings, so we're an enterprise fund. So the people at home, what that means is we kind of, we fund into ourselves. So we're totally separate. We're totally accountable for all of our expenses, all of our personnel costs, our compensation um, and employee benefits are all right there in our budget. And it means that any money that either we don't spend or we get from billing revenue comes right back into our account. So in the following years, that money is going back to support our endeavor. So we have our total budget. We subtract out what we think we're gonna get from billing revenue. We subtract out any retained earnings, any of that rollover money from our operations from previous year. And that bottom line, that last number is what we have to come up through appropriation. And that is divided up to the three member towns based on an equalized uh, population value, uh, which basically states, um, Waitley, you more or less uh, represent, let me make sure I'm getting this percentage right. Um, Waitley more or less represents 17% of the resources of South County EMS, as far as our call volume goes, as far as the population we serve, those types of things. So that 17%, it's actually 16.7%, is your share of that money that's left over in the budget. So big picture for FY23, in order to run that ambulance service with paramedics 24 seven, responding, I think lately our average response time is like seven minutes between the time you dial 911 and you have a paramedic at your side. Uh, that total number costs us $1.4 million to make happen. Mm -hmm. When we subtract out our revenue, our retained earnings, uh, and we get to weekly share, weekly share of that 1.4 million is only $111,947 for FY23. Right. Um, it is up, um, yeah. it is up 12%, 11.79. And that is a result of the drop off of call volume that we experienced in COVID. So our retained earnings are a little bit behind one year. It's there because we, they have to be certified um, by the state. Um, so we're seeing the result of, we actually saw a decrease in call volume in the height of COVID. So at the end of 2019 going into all of 2020, so that would have been fiscal year 2020 um, and into fiscal year 21. People, if they were otherwise not emergently sick, weren't calling the ambulance as often as they had in the past because they wanted to stay out of the emergency room. That's where we were trying to leave resources for the truly sick and people didn't want to go to the emergency room and catch COVID. So 
that decrease in call volume resulted in a decrease in revenue. So whereas we normally saw more retained earnings above and beyond our estimations for billing, we saw a dip in that. And that's, we're weathering that kind of COVID storm right now. I will tell you that our call volume since then has rebounded and then some. Our call volume is higher than it's ever been. January was our busiest year to date. Our revenue is back to before COVID and then some. So looking forward for fiscal year 23, I, we should expect our, our revenues to be back um, to where they have been historically. But for this particular budget, that 11.7% increase is that retained earnings uh, deficit from COVID that we're seeing. Um, we've also got uh, some incidental stuff up here. We're seeing an increase in salaries and wages. Uh, that is a result of a multi-year class comp revision and study that the town of Deerfield did. It was a, they studied this three or four years ago and they enacted a plan over three years where they first brought up um, kind of a larger COLA across the board and then going into FY23, the recommendation has been to introduce a new class comp scale. Uh, and the last time we did this was, it was probably almost seven or eight years ago, maybe even longer. So just to catch up, those entry level positions are seeing a, a large increase just to keep up with market and inflation as, as we're well aware. So while, while you're on that subject, yeah. um, what kind of turnover have you had? We Any personnel. Very little. Uh, South County EMS, we're very lucky. We have a, a wonderful cadre of really well-experienced, high-performing paramedics. And because they can come and they can just focus on the medicine aspect, um, they, they like it there. They like staying there. So we don't have a lot of turnover. In the past, we did rely more heavily on per diem staff. Uh, so per diem per day, right? Latin for per day. Basically, uh, if you want to be a paramedic, you have to do it full time. So we had a group of full-time staff, and then in order to meet that demand for one ambulance 24-7, we actually had to bring in per diems, but they're all full-time paramedic firefighters in Amherst and Northampton and in other communities. So what we saw was, particularly through COVID, was the willingness and the ability for healthcare professionals to work side jobs, they were just getting burned out, right? So if they are already putting in 40, 48 hours a week at their normal job, to then come in for another eight or 16 on the side just to be exposed to more COVID or, or something like that. Uh, so moving into 23, we've reallocated budget that we had been spending for per diems and trying to fill coverage with them and paying overtime for our current staff into bringing in more full-timers, more or less replacing the per diems with organic full-time staff. Yeah. So, in the past, like Saturday day shifts were always per diems. We didn't have any full timers on Saturday days, which meant that if there was a fire Friday night in Northampton and people were getting held, that meant our paramedic who was supposed to be coming in off their duty wasn't, and then it was you know involuntary holdover on our staff, so improved full uh, overtime, and we're burning out our our people like that. So between reallocating money from the per diems to the full time staff and a significant decrease in overtime, we're actually coming out ahead on this budget had we, versus had we just stuck with the per diems in general. So we're decreasing the overtime, we're making sure we're more stable with our own intrinsic staffing. And then you've got all those unmeasurables right now. So we're also anticipating decreased injuries, decreased workman's comp claims and the insurance uh, that will come from that uh, in upcoming years as well. So um, let's see. Um, the other market uh, change here, you'll notice that the operating expenses line is down by $100,000. Yeah. Yeah. That's all an operational reserves line. So back. Those are the numbers I'm looking at. Yeah. So back in 2018, um, we only had like four years experience at that point, right? And we quite, weren't quite sure what was going to happen. And so we both underestimated I should say conservatively estimated our revenue from billing. And we also incorporated this operational reserves. So if something catastrophic happened, if we saw a huge drop off in billing or something like that, that we would have money in reserve in order to be able to pay the bills and keep in service. Yeah. COVID was like that huge impact, that huge disaster, right? 
And we learned through that, that really the conservative estimations on our billing and the operational reserves weren't both necessary. One or the other was, was going to do the job for us. So by eliminating the operational reserve line here, we're still keeping a conservative idea on that billing revenue. And so if we have another global pandemic, I hope not, but if we do, um, this, this billing revenue concern estimation should still cover us, should still cover that gap. So there was no sense in carrying that $100,000 forward if, if it's just it's just sitting there, it's making the budget look larger than it needs to be. And because we're a um, enterprise fund, when we weren't spending that money in the past, it was rolling over and ostensibly funding itself. So the effect of that number on the budget wasn't happening, but it was making the budget look a third larger than it really actually was for our, for our expenses. So next year it's going to go back to three hundred thousand. I don't anticipate it. No, no. I, you know, I think there's something. This and this is a question for the board of oversight. And this is why the board of oversight exists, right? Because they are the representatives from the three towns, from the select boards. They're the experts in this type of thing. You know, I'm a medicine expert. Yeah, um, but budget, right? but the idea of of keeping this budget relatively stable over time, right? So if we're seeing these fluctuations because of things we can't necessarily wholly predict, like how often somebody calls 911 or what yeah. Medicare is gonna reimburse in the yeah. upcoming year or something like that. Using line items like that to help kind of stabilize that up and down so we're not getting wild swings. Yeah. I, we might see that, but again, that's that's a conversation 12 months from now or nine months from now or six months from now or whatever the next yeah. budget season will come around right. before I realize that. So um, given the nature of your business. When I look at the legal line, there's nothing there. Yeah. I mean, you guys just don't go into litigation. I mean, there's none of that going. No one's coming back at you for. No, the short answer is no. All of our legal expenses are typically, you know, like personnel related when you've got questions like that. And the town of Deerfield has. Uh, <clears throat> legal counsel on retainer, right? So the town of Deerfield, because we're part of that, they pay a certain amount. Um, and this is kind of, you know, uh, incidental legal fees. So this, the, this line item would be specifically billed towards the town. If we have if this, or excuse me, the towards the department. South County EMS has a very specific legal question for our department. It would get billed out, you know, there. If it's larger personnel related, town related things, then it's, Awesome. And how, how have you been handling the increase in gas prices? See, now you're on the road all the time. I, we've increased the, the fuel cost here. You'll notice it. Um, I, I increased it from $10,000 to $12,000. On our last expense report, which would have been maybe three weeks ago now, so it's getting a little dated. We should get a new one here. We were still right on track for about $10,000 of expenses on that. Um, that was before we saw the market the mark spike. Yeah, um, right. So okay. this is, I, there's a little bit of a shoot from the hip on here. Uh, if you have a better idea of what fuel prices are going to be, you know, four months or six months yeah. from now, uh, we should we probably be in a different business. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Be making money. Yeah. Um, so, so we did increase that a little bit. Vehicle repairs and maintenance, uh, that's down uh, $7,000 because we got rid of that international finally that's been replaced. Yeah. Oh my, oof. That thing, that international, let me tell you, that it keeps me up at night and I don't, we don't even have it anymore. Um, so we were able to drop that. We, our fleet has been very reliable since, since the new advancements. So. Okay, I think, yeah. On the next page, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but you need to tell me. Yeah. Transfer to the Deerfield General Fund, 65,000. Yeah. Which we're paying rent on a building we got for free. So well, there's there's well, there's also a rent line in there. So don't miss that too. Um, so let me see if I can find where is that receipt. So the rent line is thirty six thousand dollars. That is thirty six divided by twelve is three. So we pay three thousand dollars rent, and that goes into a building maintenance stabilization. So when there are things that are bolted to that building that need repair, a roof, a 
a furnace, new asphalt, things like that, um, repairs to those things will come out of that account. So we're actually doing well. We've got a building stabilization set up for us. That's for where the, the 36,000. That is where the 36. The 65,000, the transfer of the general fund, uh, this is uh, what is called Deerfield indirect costs. So we. No, you have a line item for indirect costs, which is 63,000. 63,000. I would assume is there doing the payroll and you're on your insurance and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So that's all the front office stuff. Yeah. I understand yeah. that. So, that I'm sorry. So I must admit. So what's your question? I'm sorry. I want to know what transfer to the Deerfield General Fund is of $65,000. It's it's the total that's of the, the 63. 63. Oh, that's, a, that's the total of the 63. All right. Yes. So, I'm sorry. Yes. So this, is a, this, is a, this is essentially a lot of money, but the way it is defined is it's a depreciation. It's anticipating. No, no, no. no. So, so what happens is this is. Um, so it's not anticipating when the building will. Be no, not this one, not this item. No, no. The, the general, the indirect costs are calculated by the town of Deerfield uh, treasurer. Excuse me, the accountant, um, Brenda. Yes, Brenda. Yeah. Oh, I'm. Oh no. Um, and the town administrator and the clerk's office. And basically, what they say is, what percentage of overall town operations right. is South County EMS? Right. So. They, they calculate that based on like hours and budget size and, and employee size. Right. And then they pull out the different departments, payroll, we budgeting. Do this, we do the we, same thing here with the water department. Great. The yes. Water, because it's an enterprise fund. A certain yeah. amount of their budget yeah. goes yeah. back to the town to, for us to do their books. So the reason you're seeing it at separately as transferred over, this is a town of Deerfield budget sheet that you have in front of you. So this is part of their accounting because they are they are more or less paying their own department or receiving money from their own department. You know, like there, there are some bookkeeping stuff. Yeah, so I that's know. why it gets a little confusing towards the bottom. Yeah. Um, but that's what that 65,000 is. All right, thank you. May I ask a question about the assessment amounts? I yes. thought you said when you started mm -hmm. that the assessment amounts were based on some combination of our uh, population count and the number of calls received by each. It's actually each town. It's it's population. It's equalized value, and this is not my forte. Um, this is a standard computational thing. I think they did do it for like wastewater or excuse me, solid waste districts and things like that. It's population size and also. Um, like per capita average income, there's something that is that is weighed um, in, in, in that. And, and this is when you're dealing with enterprise funds or things like that, future municipal agreements, this is a standard formulation that they use. So it is not the number of calls. It is not. However, yeah, no. And well, I, I, let, me, let me clarify one thing. It's not at all associated with the number of calls. But because the three towns have very similar demographic spreads, the ratio of population to the nature of the, the number of calls each have is very close to this. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you want to think about it in the way of like how much how much use you're getting out of the service, this number actually aligns pretty closely. Um, that wouldn't be the case if we bordered, you know, Springfield or, or something like that or Amherst or whatever. But it works out nicely for you, for us. Do, do you know, does that number, uh, is one of the elements of that the total property assessment? It, it might be. Because I'm, I'm just looking at it, we just had a five-year reassessment looking at the two five-year periods, you've got big jumps from uh, what, 18 to 19 and then 22 to 23, which would coincide with our five-year reassessment. Sure. Let, let me, I'm going to have to research okay. this more. This was done, um, this number was concluded with during the um, Franklin Regional Council of Governments and Bruce Baxter, we had, we're talking about 2012 at this point. They did a, a big study about this. And one of the things that they supplied the three towns 
for these numbers. So I'm going to have to go back and kind of learn okay. about that it process. It seems very precise to set about 12, 15 decimal. It's incredible, there. isn't it? Yeah. Some, yeah, some, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I'm going to have to educate myself. Just because the, 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 the big jump this year, the 11% jump sort of coincides with our assessment increase. I think that might be coincidence. Um, the, this, the assessment percentage that yeah. that 12 place has not changed since okay. since we started. So um, there, there might be no market forces that are all <laughs> seeing that change, but, um, but the percentage itself has not been revisited since it was originally determined in 2012 or 2015. Uh, I got, I got one more stupid question. No stupid questions, only yeah. We'll just go to personnel costs. Yeah. And, you know, there's, uh, you have in the, in the personnel cost, the cost of uh, health insurance, retirement, all that, you know, uh, uh, social security, all that stuff is in here. And then I go down to the next line and billing is in here for 25,000, which I, I assume is billing for like your calls and all that, right? I, We're I, paying for that. Yep. Yeah. Now, what are we getting for the 65,000 we pay Deerfield? If, if, if your budget has all these numbers that I kind of thought were part of that 65,000, what are we getting for our 65,000? You're getting everything, the town administrator, a town accountant, a town clerk, yeah, what are they, and a town treasurer. They're budget. just doing the paperwork. I, yeah, well, they're managing benefits. They're managing it. Yeah, they're managing so, benefits. That's a pretty sweet deal. <laughs> yeah, essentially, the, what the, essentially, guys, what they're going to do is they're going to say, well, when, when, when Zach needs to meet with the town administrator or when Zach needs... You know, some some legal is in that sixty five thousand as well, and we have looked at that periodically to say, all right, you guys, can you really say with a straight face that we use ten percent of the town administrator's time? And they have, they years ago they did cut some of that stuff because they couldn't say with a straight face that that it, that it was just an across the board percentage that was consistent across all all departments and uses. Um, but it's it's essentially, you know, when the the, the their electricity and all that kind of stuff. They charge for, for part of that, as would any any business charge for it, um, in, in terms of a consulting um, operation. The other way that I'm kind of looking at it now that you've explained it like that, Jonathan, is you know we're only paying 17 percent. We're paying 65 thousand is 17 percent of what Deerfield is charging. Am I saying that right, Tommy? I'm not sure. I didn't not sure I followed that, but that's okay. Understand what I'm saying? You're saying how is the sixty-five thousand? No, I'm saying if <laughs> if Wakeley's paying sixty-five thousand and we're seventeen percent of the budget, Sunderland is uh, oh thirty-one percent. So they're paying uh, no 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 that's sixty-five. Oh, the total, is the sixty-five thing. is the total. Uh, yes yes yes. Our share of it is is thirty. Is, is, okay. Yes. Sorry, that. Yeah, your share is 16.7% of that yeah. 65,000. All right. I, part of the reason why that number exists too, and, and like Jonathan said, there, you'll notice over the yeah, years, it was up to 73, 253. Yeah, was, right. And then in 2021, the boo had that conversation, which was basically like, that's great, show your work, right? Yeah. And then it was 62, and then that's great, yeah. show your work, and it was yeah. 50. So yeah, now it's back up to 65. Yeah, so there, there's some tweaking in there. And I think that for the same reason that we have employee benefits here, we're trying to be as transparent as possible. Right. So like, it, you know, there's a lot of things that the that's town does for the I police department, that, right? There's a lot of things that the town does for the police yeah. department on a day-to-day -day basis that isn't reflected in their budget. And if right. we're going to be sending a bill yeah. ostensibly to another town and say, here's your yeah. share of the total, yeah. in, they're trying to pull that out. So I don't disagree with the premise. I think you're right. Like this number is something that needs to be yeah. looked at closely all the time just to make sure that it's- yeah. I, I'm not, uh, you know, I don't know how much is, how much is involved in it. That's yeah. And, 
The problem is that half of it is Deerfield just paying itself. Well, well, yeah, there's a yeah. little, yeah. Well, and there is a little of that too, right? Because they are they are a member of this, and if right. we're trying to be totally transparent, and if we were to ever incorporate another town, we would rework all these numbers and, and all that yeah. stuff. Um, if you want a better explanation of how that number is reached, I, I mean, uh, Brenda and and Casey, I, she's got she's got the spreadsheets to show. You know, they make sure they pull out the contracted services. They make sure they pull out you know things that. Uh, you know they're trying to do a good job of being trying to be yeah. as transparent as possible. Yeah, I, it's it's certainly done in good faith. Yeah. Whether or not there's still some room to figure out exactly yeah. what that is, yeah. I, they're probably no. I think actually the way this is laid out, I think it's a good model, and I I wish we had this for each of the departments in town because in in the towns the benefits and everything else is a shotgun approach. Yeah, it's you know this is over here and that's over there. And when you want to find out what one, you know, department is actually costing the town, you've got to start pulling from all these sources, and uh, it's not fun. No, well, and I think you know part of it too. The reason why it decreased so sharply in twenty one is because I think the the board of oversight agreed that early on, yeah, the town, the front office is doing a lot of heavy lifting. We were brand new, you know, we were going illegal all the time. We were trying to figure out licenses and, and stuff like that. And so as a department becomes more efficient yes. and kind of gets its sea legs, right, that burden on the rest of the town, yeah. um, you would imagine you should be able to show is, yeah. is decreasing as well. Okay, um, thank you. Any other questions in the room? Uh, let's go to those on the remote, Jim or Brenda? I'm all set. Okay. How about Joyce or anybody else? Hey, Jonathan, are you there? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, we're good. No, no other question. Thank you again for coming Thank in. You, Thank you. And yeah. uh, it's a great update. I, yeah, no problem. Here's hoping I only ever see in this room official. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Knock on wood. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay, next we shall uh, roll right into the police. And uh, we have the police at, has anyone found it? Or PS3. PS3. Or PS3. Right after. Oh, right after. How, how nice is that? Okay. <clears throat> Is the chief on? I am. Right. Can't see. Him. There he is. All right. Oh, I just, oh, oh. Okay. Um, well, thanks for coming in. And uh, we see your budget here. And let's make sure we're all on the same page. Uh, your request is for 215, 514. Um, with an increase of 0.87% and a, uh, a dollar increase of $1,851. Um, so I'll throw it back to you, um, Chief Savine, and you can tell us um, where your upcharges are here in the budget and um, how everything's going and what your needs are. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, just to, to quickly start off, I apologize for my error. Um, that increase is going to change. If you notice the 1551 for yep. the training and recertification line, uh, okay. that was my error. I calculated that figure with um, 10 officers, which is our full roster that should only be reflected for eight officers, which would not change that number. So we could zero that line out. So there won't be that 1551 increase on that line. That, that changes things. Okay. Yes. So the only two other increases would be for $300. One is for dues, which is adding the uh, International Association of Chiefs of Police membership and um, an increase for the software for um, the our record management system, so that that fee has gone up a little bit. So that's why you see the 
uh, the $200 increase there. So those are the only two increases in the budget. So I, I just realized that and I didn't come up with the bottom line number. I can subtract it now to, if you want the bottom line number. It's all gonna change because of COLAs and you you got a salary adjustment. Part-time officers got an adjustment. Yeah, that's not in here, right? Correct, yeah. that This, this budget is level funded from what, what last year, what last year's numbers are. So it's 213.963 would be the number uh, before any adjustments or cost of living increases or anything like that. So, okay. So that's the that's the final number. Whoa. For that. Okay. So we we got in the operating budget. Um, are you feeling comfortable with those numbers? Um, is Waitley protected with that amount of money and um, services? are still upheld yeah. yes um so these these numbers i mean we when we look at the budget each year we, we kind of look at it's difficult to level fund it so we always kind of look at levels service um so providing the same service usually the things that change the most are the the salaries um i mean obviously those that get adjusted for cost of living things like that but the operating budget you see gradual increases as you know ammunition costs go up or you know dues any any of the other items that are listed on there when those go up you know a little bit each year um, I, I try to add those numbers in um, so that that gives us minimal increases each year it's, it's difficult to level fund it um, because you have some of those increases but um, so these these numbers will be able to continue providing the level of level of service that we have um, currently. I mean, there is there is some discussion on the on the table about increasing the level of service by you know adding a full time officer or um, benefited part time officer positions. I mean, we've discussed those things in the past, but you know, that's gonna that's gonna require an increase in the budget. Um, hopefully, this year. With some of the the COVID money that we have, I'm I'm hoping that we could make some of that work, or ex at least explore the options of making some of that work with some of that money, uh, instead of having it to fall back on the the taxpayers. So uh, we all saw your budget summary, and I'm sure we all read through it. If you could just touch on again the uh, what you're hoping for, you just mentioned it uh, regarding additional staff um could you just hit that again please yeah so so the the main reason we we talked about this before uh, about increasing getting a full-time officer that could that could work during the day because of administrative duties um, that that are falling on me and the additional re hours required um, to to essentially run the police department so um, looking for looking for that was kind of a, a separate issue than what we're looking at now. What we're looking at now is trying to prepare ourselves for um, the police reform that, that has gone through. And with the police reform, that's requiring us to, to train our part-time officers to the same level as a full-time officer. And then they would have that level of certification. There's one level of certification. There isn't, there isn't part-time or full-time anymore. So we don't have that level of certification. We just have one. Um, so looking at that moving forward in the future, um, as we progress down the road, we've got two more years of training for our part-time officers to get them all to the certified level of, of full-time officers. Um, we're, we're kind of trying to foresee that in the future, in the next couple of years, we may start losing some people um, to other departments, because as they become certified, they may be able to switch to, say, Greenfield or Northampton. They may scoop them up so they don't have to pay for somebody to go to a full-time academy, because that's very costly. So we have officers that are going to be certified at that level that are, some of them are most likely going to be moving on to bigger and better things. We're going to be left shorthanded and kind of facing a trend of having certified full-time officers that are willing to work part-time hours 
And that's that's kind of what we're anticipating that we're going to run into an issue, run into problems with that. So trying to essentially boost boost our staff, boost the coverage with with people that are either full time um, committed to the town or uh, like half time benefited positions. So those people would also be committed to the town. Some in, some incentive as far as pay and benefits go. That's that's going to make it more appealing to be able to to keep people on the department. I think that's that's kind of where everybody's looking at. Um, everybody being, you know, the departments in Massachusetts, we're all kind of yeah. looking at similar similar things. Um, staying competitive as far as wages go, so so we don't have people leaving. Those are the types of things that we're going to be experiencing <laughs> over the, the next couple of years. So so I think it's a it's a, a bigger discussion as far as um, adding adding positions, whether they be full time or, or benefited part-time positions. Um, in addition to that, if we're, if we're putting more people on, we're, we're probably going to be looking at additional, additional costs for, you know, possibly another cruiser instead of having two cruisers being run with, you know, multiple full-time officers, we probably want to consider adding uh, another cruiser to alleviate some of the stress on the, the, the frontline vehicles that we have. So that's going to be a, another separate issue. Again, proposing some of that um, COVID, that ARPA money, in the hopes that maybe we can do something there to, to put some money towards towards getting a third cruiser uh, to run on the front line. So those are those are some of the things that we're going to be looking at moving forward. And if if we wait two years and say, okay, this is happening, now we need to to jump in and add all of this at once versus adding things gradually over the next couple of years. Um, I, I think it would make more sense to add it gradually over the next the next couple of years as opposed to trying to to uh, have larger increases one year. Yeah. You know, um, you know, when uh, I, I think when the people of Waitley listen to the policing needs uh, within the town, um, I think we can all appreciate um, the need to hang on to quality people um, to have the right staffing. Um, and maybe the select board hears this and we don't, but what we don't hear are what are the actual policing needs of the town? We, 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 hear, we, hear, we hear about the, the um, you know, the staff shortages, the upcoming things within the department, but what's crime like here? You know, if we want another officer, if we want another cruiser, if we want another, you know, uh, individuals um, to remain here, um, is that in keeping with what you do? And what you do is keep the peace. Um, so, that's that's kind of the direction, well, that's kind of the, I think the focus as a taxpayer, I would want to know that um, if I'm going to see more officers, more uh, cruisers, more infrastructure in the police department, I want that to be as a result of the police need to keep the place safer because of what's happening on the street. I, I agree. Uh, we have so looking at looking at this year's town report, uh, just just for for some numbers, um, we're looking at the calls for service. What we call calls for service, anything that's entered into our record management system. Um, last year we were looking at fifty five hundred, so fifty five hundred and fifty seven calls. So within those fifty five hundred calls, the majority of that is proactive policing, that being checking businesses, checking um, houses, checking areas as a, as a deterrent, if you will. That's a difficult thing to, to say what types of crime we're, we're deterring because there's really no gauge for that. Our presence being out there, being on the roads, um, like I said, checking businesses, checking buildings, working with businesses, doing security checks, doing 
Uh, security checks of houses to make sure people's houses are safe and secure. Um, you know, giving advice on camera systems. And we, we, we do a whole security evaluation of your, of your home if you want us to, to come out and, and take a look. We do this with businesses as well. So some, these, are, these are all the proactive things that we're, we're doing, working with the community and working with the, um, the businesses in town. Um, as far as other calls that we have, motor vehicle complaints are probably one of the, one of the larger things that we're, we deal with in a smaller community. Um, we, we have, there's probably any person on any road that will tell you that there's people that speed through their, through their streets. There's people that go through stop signs. Um, we do have a, a fairly large number of, of crashes within our community because of um, the state road five and 10 and 116. So we, we have a lot of uh, crashes. We've done a, a good job with our enforcement, uh, slowing people down. We don't issue nearly as many citations as we used to. There are still issues. Uh, I don't know that we'll ever be able to resolve it, but the more people we have out there, the more time that we spend on the roads, the more time we have for enforcement, um, which can hopefully, again, deter those, those issues. Um, Thank you. Um, yeah, no, I, 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 think, I, I think the point that I want to make is that when you're looking for increases, when you're looking for more, there's got to be metrics in back of it. And there's got to be some association between um, what's happening and what's needed. And, um, and that's just, that's a comfort level that I think a finance committee uh, needs um, in order to recommend to the town. But that's downstream, that's not particularly this budget right here, but uh, it sounds like it's gonna be in future uh, num numbers that have come across our desk here. Do you, do you wanna talk about capital items? Uh, so, so I have one, one capital item is the, the police cruiser, the one that we're looking to, to replace. You should have a, a summary on the new police cruiser. Got it. We currently have the 2018 Ford utility, which is 2018 purchase in late 2017. Um, so that, that cruiser currently, as of today, has just over 97,000 miles on it. Um, that cruiser is used for 80 hours a week. It's used by our <clears throat> full-time evening shift and all of the weekend shifts. So that's that's the the cruiser that's that's getting the most most use. So we're looking at um, replacing that cruiser. The cost of cruisers, we're looking at a, a hybrid cruiser, which has added almost ten thousand dollars to the to the price of the cruiser. We're hoping that uh, if this goes through, there's there's some grant opportunities where we may be able to get up to seven thousand or seventy five hundred dollars um, off of that price. So that would reduce the the price get for the off. cruiser. Oh, I thought somebody had a question. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I do. Um, uh, are there any all electric options? Currently, not for frontline cruisers. There there are some some agencies that are using uh, electric vehicles, but they're using those as administrative vehicles. They're use, using those as parking enforcement. Um, there are some, some towns, I think the Michigan State Police, they're, they're kind of the, the go-to agency. They're doing some testing um, on electric vehicles, but for the cruiser that we have right now, it's gas or hybrid for the state big cruisers. Okay, I think we should else. look into that a little bit more for two reasons. One is I am absolutely sure I've seen frontline cruisers advertised being in use in towns in California. Um, and second, because uh, you know, if we wait one more year and we can get an all electric vehicle that's satisfactory, the cost of ownership is so much less than the cost of ownership of uh, a vehicle, a hybrid or a, an internal combustion engine car. Um, that it would save us money in the long run. And I think investing our capital wisely is really one of the important things here. I agree. I'm, I'm definitely, it's not something that I'm ignoring. Uh, we are looking at options as we get more and more equipment that we have to carry. It takes up more and more space in the vehicles. It, it kind of got us out of that 
you know, smaller sedan um, range of cars. It's, I think the, the next step going with the hybrid to see the, the difference that it's gonna make, where, where we see some of these electric vehicles in cities, bigger cities, you have to realize that those those vehicles are used a lot differently than our vehicles are used. They, no, they I, carry, I understand they what you're saying. Equipment, they don't can carry I, equipment. Yeah, can I, can I put it? There are electric vehicles that do carry the equipment. Um, hybrid vehicles seldom save you any money when it's a big vehicle like that. Like if you actually look at the gas mileage, you're not saving any money on mileage. Uh, you're not saving anything on emissions even because the mileage is really no better on the hybrids than they are on, on the, the regular internal combustion engine cars. But there are vehicles that can do what you're describing. It may be that no one in Massachusetts is using them right now, but I think we really have to push and find out where that is. Because if it's an extra $10,000, then, you know, then you, you look at, you don't have to keep the engine running all the time. There's all kinds of other reasons why the maintenance uh, and cost of ownership is much lower. That, and we're considering electric truck for the highway department in the coming years when that's time to be replaced. So we'll have the charging infrastructure right in town. Um, so I, I guess I want to really impress on you that I, I, I know those things are out there. They may not be readily available nearby. I understand that Northampton uses their electrical vehicles for other things. They're not using them for the front line, but maybe they haven't looked much further, okay? So I, I just, we don't have to don't go into the ground on that, but I, I'm just disputing some of the points that you're saying as fact, as something that maybe needs a little bit more research. Thank you, Joyce. Um, we have a question here from Dan. Yeah, uh, with regards to those uh, burning so much fuel or not saving any fuel money because they're idling all the time. A lot of the new fire trucks and Police vehicles are equipped with this, what's referred to as, uh, as a battery backup in them. So they don't sit there and idle all the time. They automatically shut off and go on battery. That's what this hybrid thing is. Yeah, I think, yeah. yeah, but that's going to save you on uh, gas. Yeah, it's not sure. Cost you. Yeah. It's going to save um, the wear and tear on the engine, too. Right. We have another question from Fred. Yeah, I want to go back to the personnel issues. <coughs> Uh, you talk about proactive policing and checking security systems and the like. What will the impact of having our cannabis growing or processing facilities in town that have stringent security requirements? And also the uh, retail facility that presumably will be opening in the near future. What impact do you anticipate those facilities would have on your personnel needs? Um, as far as regular personnel, I don't, I don't know that it'll be a huge impact. Um, it's going to be more areas to check. Um, there, there may be more call volume. It's difficult to say. Um, we're, we're still gathering information from, from other communities that are, that are dealing with these facilities. Um, I think the, the overall push that came right at, right at the beginning where there was, you know, traffic miles down the street and all that stuff, I think. You know, the traffic concerns, a lot of that stuff is being alleviated as more and more facilities come up. Um, from a security perspective, I mean, it's, it's added a lot of time from an administrative perspective, having to review, go do site visits, things like that. As, as these places open up, that's going to be a continual thing, working with their security. So that's additional time that uh, we're going to have to be spending administratively. Well, that's what I'm, particularly with the, the growers and producers, you would you talk about having to do proactive policing and checking out systems. Mm -hmm. These are very stringent requirements on their security systems for them to Absolutely. process them. And I would assume that that would take more man hours to go, you know, for site visits and and administrative. Oh definitely. Yeah. I mean it's it's gonna add more more patrol, you know, for the officers patrolling, they're, they're stopped, they have to stop in these areas, check in these areas, you know, investigate things that are happening in these areas, getting calls to these areas. It's, it's just difficult to say how many 
uh, or at what volume we're, we're going to see it at, but it will definitely be an increase. Yeah. yeah. So there will, there, there will be an increase. Freddie, you good? For sure. I'm good. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions in here? Any other questions from the remote team? Jim None or from me. I'm good, okay. thank you. Very good. Oh. All right. I'm good. Okay. Um, and um, Chief, I'm just going to read between the lines, but I think maybe you want to look at the uh, electric vehicles if possible. Okay, just for the next go around here. Okay, thank you very much, Chief Levine. We have no other questions. Thank you for the budget and uh, uh, have a great night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys as well. Okay. Last, next, almost. Oh, my goodness gracious. Holy smokes. We thought that this is not Beach. Oh my, this is Tritown Beach. What? Diving boards? It's in the paper today. Don't you read the paper? I didn't, I didn't see it. Okay. All right. Okay. Very good. Excellent. And for those at home, I emailed it if you if you have it. If not, I can share screen. Yeah, why don't you put that up? I start talking about it. it's not clicking my thumb back. <laughs> Who's going to walk us through this? I, Jonathan. Jonathan. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay, so we have it in front of us, and um, this is the Tritown Beach budget for the upcoming year, and we have a, a total expense of thirty thousand seven hundred thirty dollars. No, no, no. thirty-five thousand three hundred fifty dollars. If you look at the green column on the budget sheet that was distributed. Yeah. Yep. I got it. Okay. And our for us that was the eight thousand. One three one. No. No. Well, and I'm and I'm actually let me let me get into it a little bit, but I am anticipating that, that number will will. Yeah, walk us through this. That would be good. Essentially, the 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 additions to the budget are increased lifeguarding. We are planning for a Tri Town Beach that has a lot more traffic, uh, a Tri Town Beach that has increased swim lessons, and a Tri Town Beach that has uh, higher traffic in terms of the uh, River Valley uh, day camp that exists all summer long. Um, so more lifeguards uh, are, are, are the bulk of, of what we're looking at. It's, it's making sure that there is sufficient coverage. It is also uh, expanding hours so that people know that it's going to be open as opposed to scratching their heads and wondering whether it's gonna be open. If you ever are thinking about wh where you want to go to eat at a restaurant, if you don't know what those hours are going to be on a, on a daily basis, then you're going to say, you know what, I'm not going to put the effort in. But if you know that the hours are going to be there, you're going to you're going to you're going to plan it accordingly. Um, we are also uh, going to create, and again, this is not a this is not a criticism of the way things were run in the past. It is just uh, a decision that we have made to run it. Um, more 21st century uh, and, and, and thinking about what will attract people to the venue. Um, so it's the increased hours. It is 
Um, and before we get into the, these numbers, um, what's not reflected in these numbers is we are going to essentially operate it like a business where we are going to sell naming rights. Um, the pavilion will be, and I'm just going to make it up, the big Y pavilion. Um, the, 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 the barbecue area will be the pick your, the, the, the tree house or the, yeah, the, the tea guys barbecue area. Um, we want to purchase not just a raft, a wooden raft that floats in the middle of a pond, but a launch raft that, that, that a 12 year old actually would want to use and have fun with. And we, we can call it the tree house launch, you know, launch raft. Um, so those kinds of kinds of costs will not be incurred by residents of, of, of the towns. Um, so it is all about maximizing the attractiveness of the venue, um, taking down the barbed wire that is around the bathhouse currently and making it um, look like something that is welcoming. Um, replacing some of the fencing and landscaping around that fencing with volunteer efforts uh, and a little bit of money that we have in, in, in reserves um, so that we have some beautification going on. Um, <clears throat> making sure that environmental projects are done so that we can effectively move the dwarf bulrush, and I won't get into the environmental pieces of it, but it is a protected plant species that grows in the beach that people sit in. Um, so we've never been able to replace that sand with quality beach sand. An environmental study will be done uh, when the growing season makes both the bulrush visible and, and vibrant, as well as finding where another, uh, another footprint on the property would be a viable place for the bulrush to live. We can't eliminate it. We need to move it. Um, that will allow us next year to replace beach sand um, so that it is actually comfortable, comfortable sand. Um, you know, improving the bathhouse, perhaps moving the bathhouse if, 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 that's, um, if that's what's seen as necessary down the road, not this year. Um, so increased lifeguards, having a head lifeguard that is also <clears throat> not just a head lifeguard, but is helping us monitor the facility, um, making sure that we use, um, the correct type of, of technology so that we can effectively track who visits the, the park, how frequently they visit the park, and if they've paid the annual dues. We're gonna be increasing the, 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 the fee structure on annual dues, not by a lot, but to make sure that we're, 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 we're charging 21st century prices as opposed to prices that you saw in the, in the, in the 80s, 90s. Um, again, it's, it's intended to both make sure that we can track who's using the facility to make sure that um, we are charging appropriate rates based upon what, what town you are from and making it more welcoming. Um, the, the number you see for Waitley of 8131, I, I, I don't wanna be held to this, but I believe that will be going down because we will be um, formally inviting the town of Sunderland to, to, to join Tritown Beach this week, uh, giving them a budget number as, as well. Um, my anticipation with that number is that Waitley, um, using census figures that Brian uh, provided today um, of 15.51% of the three town population, um, I'm hoping, again, if, if, if Sunderland does not ultimately bite, it's going to change this, but we're hoping that that number will be 5949. Um, and then Sunderland and Deerfield will, would pay proportionally based upon the Sunderland percentage of 35.36% and Deerfield of 39 or 49.13%. Um, but it is about lifeguard, it is about coverage, it's about safety. Um, we are hoping that all the capital costs, environmental costs will be, will be incurred by budget money that we already have or user <laughs> that we'll be, that we'll be uh, implementing this year. Okay. Well, um, it's looking up for, for sure. Yep. Do we have any questions uh, regarding Tritown Beach? Donna. Um, Jonathan, the spreadsheet has a, a sidebar with income figures, numbers of houses of various types. Is that for the whole beach or are those weekly numbers? That's for the whole beach. This, this spreadsheet is for, is for, the, whole, is for the whole beach. Um, Donna, so, I, so, 
Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So you're anticipating that for two, at least the two towns, 60 people would join the beach as well. I think that's lowballing it. Um, I think these are we are we are making sure that they are conservative estimates, um, but it's also based upon uh, foot traffic pre-COVID, um, and those numbers are not. I don't necessarily trust those numbers because there wasn't a good tracking system put into place. Um, we also had lifeguards that were very, you know, and I'm not. It's just the the the, the reality of hiring a, an 18 year old. They're comfortable with, with asking people for their for their proof of, of season. I'm sorry. I'm repeating Dan Kennedy's um, of <laughs> So those those numbers are glad to hear that the numbers are low because they certainly look low. Yeah. Um, and, and my other question, you listed quite a number of capital improvements you hope to achieve. Do you have any sense of how much, and I understand you you hope to get sponsorships, but how much will they cost? Well, um, for the- Will they be a million dollars or a hundred thousand, some ballpark figure? The, I, I don't know. The, the only capital cost that would be, would, would, you know, sprucing up the pavilion is not gonna be a lot of money and that will be, um, done only if we get sponsorship, if we get naming rights. Uh, otherwise, it's a good project for just... <clears throat> the, the bathhouse is probably going to be need to be completely replaced, and we would look to do that with to the extent possible with volunteerism. But that won't be until after this current season is over. Um, things like pulling down the barbed wire and and um, is going to be done by volunteerism. The replacement of the fence will be a cost, but we have um, we, we will be using the budget that we have from the current fiscal year to replace part of that of, of that fencing. And we won't be replacing the whole fencing, but it's more the gate that is pretty unmanageable at this point. Thanks. Are there are there any plans moving forward to utilize the facility for more? than just a swimming and sunbathing. Um, yeah, I'll leave, leave it at that. Like, like for instance, could you ever put canoes on there? Could you ever, could you ever, you know, rowing craft or things like that that might draw people down there that would want to experience it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Paul, we are, again, it, it goes to the, to the to the naming piece that we that we want to get to but we want to have kayaks and canoes um that people could bring down on their own or um put them up for for lease of an hour two hours three hours at a time um so that people can use the the periphery around um ar around the pond for for those types of types of activities we want to put in a, a walking trail uh, around the 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 uh facility as well we, we have to look into that a little bit because it does butt up against the, the railroad tracks and we want, you know, obviously to be safe about that. Uh, but honestly, the, it, it, I want it to be a recreation facility beyond swimming. Um, you know, my goal is to put in, in the adjacent piece of land, um, a, a tennis court, um, you know, four square, uh, basketball court, things like that to make it really a place that 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 people plan to go on a daily basis, not just once in a while. It it I will I will liken it to a club, if you will. Um, but that club just would be open to everybody, and there'd be sliding scales on prices based upon where you live. Um, but but I want this to have amenities like a like a club that makes Whitley a a destination for young families as opposed to a a, a drive through uh, from Williamsburg to Amherst as people go to and from work. Gotcha. Well, uh, it's 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 nice to see that there's a vision for, for this, but I think um, the question is, from my understanding, you will not be returning to the select board seat. Um, will you be staying with this? I'm staying with this for the time being. Uh, yes. 
this is this is one of the few things that I am staying with. That's good. I'm going to, any, go ahead. if you know me at all, I'm going to see projects through. And then when the project is done to my satisfaction, um, I'll pass off a, a finished project to someone who can who, who can run it. But I am not leaving this anytime soon. Okay, that's good. Because that's what happens to public project projects. When people move on, somehow the project just kind of vaporizes. Okay, great. Any other for, any other questions for Jonathan? Either from the, the remote individuals or here in the room? No. Jonathan, thank you very much for the work um, with the Tricon Beach. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. Um, okay. Um, buildings. Can we, can we touch upon the buildings? Yeah. Um, and that's. Um, G6. 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 Yeah. So this was revised since the last time it was submitted. Um, increased electricity based on usage in the uh, year 2021. Uh, we had to bump, up, bump that up by $2,000. Usage was in 21 was $23,960. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in the part and just a few other changes here. Uh, and I also dropped the um, special projects line out of that was a thousand there to help uh, deal with that. Um, we'll leave a debt increase. Um, we really haven't used that money. It's been it's been appropriated since 2019, but really just hasn't been a lot of movement on. On either of those two projects. Um, hopefully, the center is supposed to move along with an RFP. Um, hopefully, we can get that out in April. Um, but it's an expenditure that was there that just hasn't really been used. So it helps offset that electricity increase. So overall, it will be a $750 increase. Um, G6. Sure. Okay. Um, yeah. Any questions on the town building expenses? Some seven hundred fifty dollar increase year on year. Um, total maintenance for anybody at home that doesn't see the number, the total number being asked in this coming year is seventy four thousand eight hundred fifty dollars to maintain the buildings in this town. Um, no questions. Okay. We're good with the town building. Um, how are we doing on the agenda? Okay. So, okay. if I if I will for a second, yep. I know it's almost going to it's going on eight o'clock almost. Yeah. Um, really, I think in terms for the the typical process that the finance committee would would follow, we've invited and spoken with all the department heads that the that the committee had wanted to speak with. Um, so what we have left uh, typically is the committee will talk about the budget as a whole, um, the operating budget as a whole. He'll talk about capital projects and it will talk about um, miscellaneous spending articles and also anything related to personnel. Uh, usually it takes it, it really takes me a meeting from when the finance committee votes on the, the personnel recommendations to go through and make those adjustments based on that percentage. So it's usually a meeting after the finance committee votes on the personnel. That's usually our final meeting. Um, we want to talk about personnel tonight, then possibly, you know, April 5th could be our the, the committee's final meeting. Or we could, if we don't want to talk about personnel tonight, um, we could talk about it on the 5th and then maybe have a, a, a subsequent meeting on the, the 12th. We would still have time in terms of when the warrant would need to be, you know, when the budget would need to be finalized and get warrant signed. Um, so, okay. I don't know what folks. My feeling is that personnel discussions are important. Um, they, they, they should be at the front end of a meeting um, when everybody's fresh and ready to speak about things rather than shoot one minute at the end. So, um, that's my feeling. Um, you know, we're heading towards eight o'clock and we've got two hours of 
um, this. So, um, uh, are we good? Tommy? Yeah, we can go to that. Okay. Everybody, is everybody good with that? Okay. At home, Jim, Brenda, you guys are okay yeah. with that? Okay. Yeah. We're going to meet on the 5th. So, we'll meet on um, the 5th. And also, and also the 12th, right? And, and the 12th. And the 12th. And we'll, uh, and on the 5th, um, we will deal with personnel um, um, issues at the top of the top of the meeting. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, so if it's all right, we'll, we'll put on the personnel. Um, we'll talk about any of the capital projects. Yeah. Um, we know. And we'll talk about there's some miscellaneous spending articles as well. Yeah. That don't hit the capital. And I think we, you know, should also have a sense of. Um, what the impact, what, what, what the projected impact to taxation is um, by the given, by the budget itself, yeah. if possible, you know, to the best of our ability, to the best of your ability, let's put it that way. Yep. Um, and, and in terms of, in terms of operating budgets, if, if many members have any uh, questions about specific department budgets that are outstanding, it would be good to take an email, I don't know, email, Paul and myself, and we could reach out to the department head so that yeah, so that we're, we're really wrapping up questions and figuring out what how we want to yeah. steer this. So. Yeah. Okay. Fred, would you anticipate that the next meeting, the fifth, is a could be a joint meeting with the select board, and then that the twelfth is finance committee only? And I believe so. Yes. We're going to be talking about personnel and capital. Right. I think the select. So you guys should be here. <laughs> All right. Uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Make a motion to adjourn. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. At all, Jim? Yes. Brenda? Okay. All in favor? Yes. We're good. Aye. Okay. All right. Have a good evening. And uh, thanks for showing up.